Good morning. Welcome on this Lord's Day. Uh, on the calendar, it's called Children's Day. Now, the parents may say, that's every day, isn't it? Uh, Children's Day. And in some way, it is. We celebrate uh, the blessing of family today. Thank you for joining us in that. And later on in the service, we're going to have a special time of blessing for our families here at St. David's. Welcome to those who are worshiping online with us. Maybe make a little comment or a like so we know of your uh, worship with us. Those that are worshiping here, you know I'm going to say, grab those black binders in this, each pew towards the center aisle. You'll find one, our attendance register. If you're here first time or this is your 1,708th time, whatever, uh, we want to know of your attendance with us. It's uh, just kind of let, letting family know family is present. So thank you for joining us and doing that right now. Some announcements. Uh, Today would have been uh, Donut Day, fellowship time. But we're going to move that to next week for Donuts with Dad, okay? It kind of fell last year, and, uh, but we thought, we'll just do Donuts with Dad next year, uh, next, next week, next week. Okay, we're off to a good start. Uh, as you can see, Vacation Bible School is prepped and ready. Uh, thank you, uh, Zimmermans for their work and others that assisted them in uh, putting this together. Uh, do you guys need marital therapy after this? Uh, no, we're good. You're doing okay. I mean, but I mean, they were up here, but it was really heated, but not them. It was very hot the other day. And they wouldn't put the air conditioning on. They had fans on, but uh, thank you so much. And thank you for those that came together and also brought some assistance there. Thank you for those who are serving this week as teachers, as staff, as uh, games, every possible thing, snacks. Uh, just We are calling all to pray for our VBS. This is one of our major outreaches to the younger crowd uh, and their families. Uh, pray for the gospel. Gospel is on Thursday, right, Peggy? Thursday. Uh, but pray every day uh, as the word is shared and taught with the children. Uh, we have 30-some that were already registered online, and we have some paper registrations. But usually the first two days is the big days of continuing to register. So pray for those households there. And thank you. If you still like to help, See Peggy and Donna, they'd love to hear you say, can I help? Uh, there's also sign-ups for snack provisions, and also for Friday night we have a meal uh, for our VBS families. Um, so again, there's many ways to help out. Uh, also, we're collecting peanut butter and jelly as one of the missions efforts of the children and their families during the week. Uh, you can participate. Uh, maybe during the week you want to drop off peanut butter and jelly during VBS time or the church is open from 9 to 3 uh, through Monday through Friday. You could do that or even next Sunday. Drop off some, uh, bring in some peanut butter and jelly. That'll go to the Dover Food Bank. So read those announcements about VBS and how you can help. Um, we've been advertising some time now a trip we're taking to Sight and Sound and um, the money is due for the ticket purchase by uh, June 30th. So if you uh, want to get that together and provide it to Lori, uh, we just follow those instructions on how to make that payment. Um, you can make cash or check, but as long as it's in an envelope that's labeled by you, that would be great. Uh, that's all the announcements I have. Um, prayer request. Uh, to share with you, uh, Bobby Gladfelder. Bobby sits back there with Keelan, his grandson. He's not with us today. Uh, Bob went to the hospital with some chest pains and symptoms. Uh, they ran several tests. Everything came out good on the test. He came home last night about 11.30, and they said, go see a cardiologist is the follow-up. Uh, Henry, have you had any contact with them today? And... Okay, okay, so remember Bob and Keelan, and uh, 
We love them uh, back there. And Keelan, does he clap back there, guys, with the music? We praise it like that. Praise the Lord that he can do that with us. So uh, look at your prayer list. There's many there. Uh, again, Joel says, thank you for all those cards you're getting out there uh, to him. And uh, it's a blessing. And he really feels uplifted in the prayers. And I see, uh, he has good days and bad days. And just an update, I mean, when I was leaving on Friday from visiting, he walked outside with me. You know, he wanted to get a little bit of brief, fresh air. And so that was a good sign. You know, he, he's not really uh, mandated to be in bed, whatever he needs to rest, but he was sitting up, he walked outside. So those are all good signs there. And just continue to pray for Joel and Sue. Uh, Jackie Brenneman continues to be under hospice care uh, at uh, York South. Remember her and Lou in your prayers. Uh, let's uh, rise. And uh, welcome one another as the praise team will become forward and lead us in song. under now hospice care i think you'll see that in the bulletin yeah it just um yeah it's mainly is his breathing you know he fell and injured himself but that doesn't seem to be a problem yeah yeah okay yeah thank yeah. you yep thank you And Sandy, when you're done, could you just come out and reach over and put this, put the mic? No, okay. The guys are going to be singing. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'll take care of it. Okay. It was for scripture reading. That's okay. Oh, okay. Huh? No, it's okay. Yeah. It, Good it's for, morning. It's for uh, Brittany. This. Not on. Can you hear me? What? Move over? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> We got to help out our, there we go, our guy in the sound room. It was great to see everyone greeting one another this morning. And we're going to continue on in the service with our praise and worship through song. And our first song this morning is This Is Our God. Remember those walls that we called sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we called death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came, and he died, and he rose. Those giants are dead now. This is our God. This is who he is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what he does. He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Remember that fear that took our breath away. Faith so weak that we could barely pray. But he heard every word, every whisper. Now those altars in the wilderness tell the story of his faithfulness. Never once did he fail, and he never will. God, this is what he does. He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let
and heaven and earth proclaim, this is our God, King Jesus. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus, who rescued me from that grave. Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise. Nobody but Jesus, who rescued me from that grave. Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise. Nobody but Him, this is our God, this is who He is. He loves us. This is our God, this is what He does. He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim, this is our God, King Jesus. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim, this is our God, King Jesus. Amen, right? Amen. Amen. Psalm 139, 11, and 12 says, If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. And our next song is called, Jesus Loves Me. I was a stone, I was covered in shame. 
This song I remember singing down downstairs in the Sunday school opening for the children and Sandy led and um, my kids were small then and it's just a precious memory and this song is called Oh How He Loves You and Me. in the week ahead. Guide and direct us in everything we do and in everything we say. And we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Uh, the first song we're going to bring to you this morning is uh, Haven of Rest. And uh, as we were going through it, as when we got to the, the chorus part of it, but we couldn't have picked a better song, I guess, for the week to come. Because um, the first line of it is, I've anchored my soul. And the, the theme of the Bible school this week is uh, with that. So it's coincidental, I guess, or however we picked it out. But Hope you enjoy the song. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea, so burdened with sin and distress, till I heard a sweet voice saying, "Make." choice and I entered the haven of rest I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest I'll sail the wide seas no more the 
tempest may sweep o'er the wild stormy deep in jesus i'm safe evermore i've yielded myself to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of the word my fetters fell off and i anchored my soul the haven of rest is my lord i've anchored my soul in the haven of rest, I'll sail the wide seas no more. The tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep. In Jesus, I'm safe evermore. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide seas no more. The tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep in Jesus. I'm safe evermore. In Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Our second song we'd like to bring this, this morning is uh, Long Black Train. Uh, we will not try that one a cappella. <laughs> so, long black train. <laughs>
Cause there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. Cling to the Father and His holy name. And don't go riding on that long black train. It sounds so good, but I must stay away. That train is a beauty, making everybody stare. But its only destination is the middle of nowhere. Cause there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. Father and His holy name, and don't go riding on that long black train. I said, cling to the Father and His holy name, and don't go riding on that long black train. Yet watch out, brother, for that long. The devil's a drive in that long black train. Version sometime. I mean, it'd be interesting. Uh, but today's, uh, I would say, we could send the video to a Grand Old Opera for your uh, entry into the Opry there, guys. Are you ready for that? Good morning. Sound boy sleeping back there. I think we need to move it closer to you. All right. This morning's reading is from Genesis 4, verses 1 through 16. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, you will not be accepted. But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse. And to... Re sorry and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops to you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I'll be hidden from your presence. I'll be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This is the word of the Lord.
We take your hymnals and we're going to sing together 579, the classic Jesus Loves Me. And on the last stanza, I'm going to call the families that are here, parents, bring your children up, grandparents, you're welcome to join us with your families. And we're just going to come up here for a time of blessing. Thank you for joining us and look at that they lined right up there for me and uh, I didn't have to tell them to turn around that's great great and uh, sorry that I just blinded Dom can you move a little to your left there Dom okay thank you don't leave okay and uh, again Children's Day in a way it's every day in, especially in our household right now with a grandson that I'm so proud of and cherish and I always say to Lori, maybe you've heard me say, it's like, did I do this with the girls? Did I play with him, them as I played with him when he was a baby and, and change diapers? I do remember changing diapers, okay? And feeding bottle, uh, bottles and now giving cereal in the morning. So we got a whole routine down. And uh, just uh, grandparenting, as I'm learning, is like, you get a, like a second chance, you know? And uh, amen, Donna, there. And they're doing the same thing. And uh, But I mean... Uh, we hold our children precious, no matter what their age, from a newborn to maybe giving you even grandchildren. Uh, we hold our children special, and we want to have a time of blessing. And I, I found this here, Irish family blessing. Very simple, but the theme. May love connect us, faith direct us, and God protect us. Don't we want that for our families? We want it for our church family, too. So uh, let's, let's pray together. Uh, those parents, grandparents, please, you know, lay your hands on the children uh, around you. And uh, let's, let's pray a blessing upon the children and the households. Lord, we come and do pray that you would, your love would connect us. Your love. Not the way the world describes love, but your perfect love holy, righteous love we want for our families. We want for the, the generations under our responsibility and care. Help us to nurture uh, the next generations with your truth. We're glad to see the children and youth that are here, Lord, this morning before us that 
They are hearing worship. They'll be receiving instruction in God's word. And hopefully they will see among us, all of us, godly examples of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you to direct our faith. Faith in you. Faith in each other. Uh, bond the families together. Protect them. Uh, we ask for their protection always, Lord, your protection. Equip the parents, grandparents, uh, aunts and uncles, uh, all to have that godly influence, godly example. When we sin, may we confess, repent, ask for forgiveness from you and those that we've harmed, that we can be examples to our children in that way. Lord, we ask you to protect the children and the generations ahead from the world, the flesh, the devil. And that all will seek you as we nurture them, as we call them with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to come and follow you. Bless each home here. Bless the parents uh, where skills of parenting and knowledge. And I'm sure there's many days, like all of us have had, where, Lord, what do I do? Or what have I done? Show us, Lord, the way and Lord, may it always be your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Families, God bless. Thank you. Uh, children are dismissed to junior church ministry. You don't get to see it, but I get to see it, unless you're sitting in the back. Uh, I love to see the flood of the, the, the exits uh, mid-service every week, uh, knowing that they're going to... Uh, Worship, and they're going to be discipled downstairs. So uh, take your Bibles. Where do you think I'm going to send you? First John. First John. We probably only have a couple more Sundays of First John, and then we'll go to Second John. That will be not as long of a journey in that letter. But First John, chapter three, verses eleven. Through 18. While you're turning there, just want to make a note, so provide you with a, a resource you may want to consult. As we know, this month our nation and world is celebrating a thing called Pride Month. It will not be celebrated here ever as your shepherd. But uh, I want to equip you to encounter the scriptures, and bring them to our world that is lost. And uh, there's a book I just recently received, and I also heard uh, the speaker uh, a couple weeks ago give a presentation from his book. His name is Lester Zimmerman. He's uh, the lead pastor at uh, Petra Christian Fellowship in New Holland. Uh, and he's written this book, Understanding Homosexuality and Transgenderism, then biblical and scientific insights with compassionate care. Uh, a conservative uh, viewpoint of the scriptures, uh, inspiration of the scriptures. He's very solid on the understanding of scriptures. He uses the social sciences. What they're saying is the, the detriment uh, that is going on in this, this, this kind of promotion. You can't find this at a bookstore. It's Amazon. Uh, you can look up the title. Uh, in Amazon, or the uh, author, Lester Zimmerman, or call the church office. We'll provide you more details on that, or even order you a copy. Very inexpensive book, I think nine bucks. I got mine at a discounted rate of seven, uh, but uh, very still, that for book price, that is. And it's, it's, it's not, takes you so deep that you get drowned in it and lose your place. It's, it's very clear. And I, I like what he's done there. So again, uh, just a resource there for you to be equipped. You need to be equipped with the truth and be able to explain the truth. And I like his pastor's heart that he says there, compassionate care. The world doesn't see us that way as Christians many times. So uh, I just want to give that reference there to you. Again, call the office. Laura doesn't have the information yet that I'll provide, but we'll get that there by Monday morning. You can call in any time. So again, we're in 1 John chapter 3, 11 through 18. Lori, did you find that? Thank you. Okay, 1 John chapter 3, 11 through 18. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. 
Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Amen. Dan, can I ask a favor? Can you turn the air, air conditionings on? To me, I'm a, little, I'm a little hot. I don't know about anybody else. Okay, thanks, Dan. And uh, how many has been to a carnival? You've been to a carnival through the years? Oh, they're, you know, they're different than what we grew up in. I mean, every year uh, growing up, we always had our local fireman's fair. And it was uh, just a short walk from our house to the, the large field at the firehouse that they would hold it every year. And uh, go with mom and dad, and we'd go and get, you know, rides and eat and eat and roller rides and games that are there to rip, your, rip you off and things like that. Then when I got into my teen years, I left mom and dad, and they never went unless they went for something to eat. But I uh, had my fun with friends there. And uh, then there was the arcade. Uh, I don't know if your fair ever had it. We had the arcade, a big tent and all the pinball and all the latest uh, amusement games that were there uh, electronically. And, but I don't know what generation you would be a part of, but some of you may have seen something like this. I know the picture's not that well, but you ever tested your love? There was a, you ever done the love machine test? Huh? There's, they, it comes in different ways, uh, but it would be that there's a hand, you put a quarter in, and uh, you grab one of that red handle there and squeeze it. And, uh, and then it, the lights go up and down on the sides there. And it falls on there. And uh, there's hot stuff, passionate, burning, wild, naughty but nice, mild, harmless, clammy, <laughs> uh, poor. Uh, I can't read the rest there, what it says, but poor, most likely try again. But uh, anybody ever done one of those machines? Come on. Donna, okay, Donna. Linda, there, back right there too. And uh, these machines are most likely collectibles now. You know, and there's still, you can find some working ones out there and people trying to sell them. They're fun, but do they really tell us if we're romantic or how loving we are? No. Now, John, you want to get one for the house there? I see you thinking. Yeah, you know, I see you thinking there. Uh, not for you, but for Cammy, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, the love test. But really, I think the scripture that we're in here today, and really even the, all of the letters of John, is about love. It's one of the major themes. You've, have you found that out? As we each week you say, didn't we just hear about that? You know, you think I'm just repeating sermons and you just didn't catch on yet? Not true, okay? Each week is a different message and a different element of love. Uh, John is given the kind of the title, the Apostle of Love. Uh, you may find some commentators, Bible teachers that will uh, share that, that some call him the Apostle of Love. So um, we're going to build on what we've heard about love, but again, I think there's a, a love test here to be taken as we walk through these verses. So let's begin. First off, John says in verse 11, this is the message you've heard from the beginning. We should love one another. He's talking to Jew, Gentile, uh, of the church there, and that from the beginning, the message has been from God is love. We should love one another. If we go back to the book of Leviticus, there is there to love one another. God is love, and to, we are to love one another as ourselves. Okay, that kind of the golden rule there put on. We see it 
a stream of it through the scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, that we should love. So the message from the beginning is love one another. And we learn that love is at the heart of the gospel. I think one of the first points I want to share is love is at the heart of the gospel. It's what Christianity is all about. And then John goes into talking about a ne negative example of love, or really more of hatred. Um, we heard Brittany read the account of Cain and Abel. Verse 12, do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brother's were righteous. Previously, we've heard uh, in, the, in John's letter about children of the devil and children of God. And we're getting here an example of children of the devil and children of the God inter interacting. And he says, do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one, the devil. And he murdered his brother. We have the first murder recorded in Scripture. And why did he murder him? And I'd encourage you, go back and read Genesis 4 again on your own. There's so many things to teach us there and so many questions that can be answered, but then also maybe just relieved are, are there and we just have to just say, wow, what, what happened in and, uh, you know, do I need to be on guard that I don't lack like Cain? And do I really worship God like Abel did? So do not be like Cain, who belonged to the devil, who murdered his brother. Uh, and why? What's the reason? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Evil and holiness. Evil, righteousness going on there. So just a recap of this story. Let's go through a recap here. Okay, we have Cain, who was a farmer. Okay, he produced a crop. Abel, we just saw him a shepherd or a herdsman, uh, raising livestock. They come to worship God. Maybe together, maybe separately. But Cain brings some fruits of the soil just some fruit of the soil. It doesn't say that it was the best of the crop. All we hear is some fruit of the soil. And then Abel, he brings the fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. Firstborn, you know, the, maybe the strong stock, uh, stock that didn't have any defects. Now, this is before the law was written and given to Moses. Again, but again, there's something that must have been taught to Adam and Eve, and they were to teach to their children about proper worship of God. So God responds to the offerings. He looked in favor on Abel and his offering. He saw it as pleasing, as an act of worship uh, in, in, in respect to God himself. Then uh, he did not look in favor on Cain and his offering. And Cain reacts. He's very angry and his face is downcast. Always looked at that phrase, his face was downcast. And was like, I think we all know what that means. You know, we may not be able to catch it in words, but have you ever yourself been angry and you've seen an image of yourself angry or others that are angry, there's something about our temperament, our disposition that definitely telegraphs that we're angry. And uh, this is going on. And of course, God is God. He knows the hearts. He knows the mind. He knows our motives and our feelings and our emotions. And God gives him a warning. And he first starts off with a question. I, I want to do a study sometime. It's going to probably be a lengthy study. It's like the questions that God asked us. The questions that God asked us. When he wants to, you know, wake us up, he wants to teach us. Of course, teaching is involving a lot of good questions. And God asks good questions. Why are you angry? Why are you face downcast? Then he says, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, he gives the warning. 
Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. And I think that's where a, a strong message for us in the 21st century is that what is my heart conditioned towards others? Am I angered? And we're warned in Scripture, don't sin in your anger. Uh, and, uh, but sin is crouching there, waiting for that anger, bitterness, hatred to open the door for more sins to be committed by you. So sin is crouching. And I think of it as like a, a lion, you know, uh, ready to attack. When, when your defense is down, he's ready to come after you. It desires to have you. You must master it. Now, that tells me that it can be mastered, right? Or God would have not said, master it. No, I can master my anger, my ha hatred, bitterness, my feelings ill against other people. So there is hope for you if you're here today and the anger is the issue. Bitterness is the issue. And it's now grown to hate, hating somebody. I know hate is, sounds like a strong word. We don't want to use that to describe what it's about. I mean, we may say, I hate this in the world. Different things that are going on. But do we hold other people in the same manner? I hate them. Strong words there, strong words. So we are to examine our hearts. And again, it's all related to love. If I'm hating somebody, I'm not loving. Not at all. Now look at verse 13. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. It seems like it's a kind of interjection there. He talked about Cain hating Abel and the murder and God's, uh, he uses that example of not loving. But he says, don't be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. Why did Cain hate his brother? Did you catch it? Abel was doing the righteous thing. He offered the right sacrifice. God was telling Cain, next time you come to worship, bring the proper form of worship. Bring the, a, a sacrifice. And we have that kind of a, a highlighting entry towards the, the, the spilling of blood and, and sacrifice before God for sins, to make reconciliation, to be repentant in there. So, so if somebody hates you, the world hates you, maybe a, a count on that you're righteous. Not that you're a sinner, but that you are righteous and that you're a forgiven sinner and you are pursuing holiness. Don't wear it as a medal and as a martyrdom, as I've met people to do that. If I'm doing the right things, the world's going to be against me. Yay! No. Just follow the way of righteousness that God puts before you. Obey, worship. Uh, be discipled, follow the truth of God's word, receive his grace, extend the grace. That is the way of righteousness. And Jesus told us this hatred will happen. John 15, 18 and 19. G John remembers Jesus' words here. He says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hate, hated me first. If you belong to the world, you would love it as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. The world hates you because you're not really a part of this world. You live here, but you're not opposed to be acting as the world and living as the world. And you've heard that from the scriptures often. So let's move on. Love is at the heart of the gospel. We're to love one another and not follow the example of Cain. Going further on that, verse 14 we know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Passed from death to life. Here he is describing salvation. Okay, being born again, I went from being dead spiritually now to alive spiritually by the work of the Holy Spirit and by my faith in Jesus Christ. We know we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. 
Anyone who does not love remains in death. To paraphrase, to give a commentary there, if you don't love your brother, your sister, as the Christians, are you really saved? Are you really saved? Anyone who does not love remains in death, not born again. Verse 15, anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. Didn't Jesus teach that in the Sermon on the Mount? That if you hate someone in your heart, you call them a fool or a, a slanderous name, that you're under judgment of being a murderer. We can murder people in our minds and our hearts because that's where it starts and lead, may lead to the physical act of murder. We murder people with our words, our actions or inactions. So anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. You have that hatred towards a brother and sister in Christ, the family of God. There's something wrong. There's something going on wrong. So the point we want to learn is love provides assurance that we have eternal life. Love doesn't give you salvation, okay? But it shows fruit. What is part of the fruit of the Spirit? Love, right? Love. So uh, if I'm not producing love and not loving the family of God members, there's que something's questionable going on. Love provides the assurance that as you're growing in love, you're transforming in your relationships, Okay, there may be some problems in relationships. You work on them. You move deeper into love and commitment to each other, fellowship with each other. Then you have that assurance. The Spirit and the Word of God is working. And you can be assured that I'm a child of God because there's a change in my nature towards loving others. Got it? Let's go on to a second part, really, we'll find is serve one another and follow the example of Jesus. So I give you, you can look up later, uh, John 13, 1 through 17. That's the event where Jesus washed his disciples' feet. He served his disciples by washing their feet. And I truly believe, and there's no evidence against it, is that Jesus washed Judas' feet. Somebody that he would hate, you would think we would hate, but he offered grace, service, Love to someone that was going to reject him, despise him, betray him. That's love, friends, isn't it? And then, uh, so Jesus gives us an example of servanthood, of washing feet. And he says to his disciples in verses 14 and 15 of John 13, Now that I, your teacher, have washed your feet, and also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So Jesus says, here's the example about service out of love. Are you ready to wash one another's feet? Literally, and you've heard this called from Scripture before here, that can you go and serve others in a way that you're washing their feet? And humble service, can you do things to humbly serve others? And it may be, there's some people you can easily do it with. Easily serve, give sacrifice of your time, your ways, and you're going to put your way aside, and you put their, way, uh, their needs ahead of your needs. But then there's those that you don't do well with, and you clash with, and have conflict with. The greatest gospel message you could give them is, Serve them in a compassionate way, a Christ-like way. And again, why are you doing this? Because Christ set an example for me to love those that I may have disagreement with, that I may not have a, a perfect relationship, but I do want to have a better relationship with you. That opens the door for you to, again, bring the gospel truth and find a reconciliation, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you into that. So love provides assurance of salvation. We talked about love there. We're moving in, into verses 34 and 35 is the command to love. The command to love. Jesus said, a new command I give you. Love one another as I 
have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. If you love one another, the world will know that you're a follower of God, follower of Jesus, that you're part of the family of God. So service always involves sacrifice. This is what we know what is love. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay our lives down for our brothers. That's sacrifice. Christ sacrificed for us. He gave his all, and he says, follow after me, live as me. Service always involves sacrifice. It may require a lot of sacrifice, hard sacrifice, um, to put somebody else's needs before your own, their interests before your own. It may be of time, talent, treasure. It may be a time where you may have to keep your mouth shut and speak less in order to really serve. Where you want to really tell them, here's what I think you ought to do. And there, I, God will open the door for when that time is when they see your humble, sacrificial service. Verse 17. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. So he says, those who have material possessions, you have, need, you have your needs met, you have, God's blessed you, maybe you have an abundance, maybe you're not, maybe you're just making it through, but you have it. But you see a brother or sister in need, but you don't have pity on them. Your heart's not moved for them. The question is, how can the love of God be in him or her? How can we be a Christian and not be having our hearts broken for those in need around us. I know that we need a more an extensive study of Scripture to really deal with some of your questions in this area. Do we meet every need that comes our way? Again, I think you use discernment, seeking the will of God and, and how to meet a need. There's times in the seasons of the church uh, we'll get calls, it seems like, almost every day. And then a season will go by, no calls. And uh, there will be time, and sometimes, uh, I mean, mainly I'm talking about community calls. I mean, church needs, we address church needs when they're, avail when they're recognized, and we step up, you step up, you do a wonderful job. We could always do better. Definitely, we can always do better. So let me just stand out there. If you have a need, and you really are overwhelmed, and you just can't get it met, give me a call. Call your brothers and sisters and say, here's where I'm at. And the body of Christ can come together. I can still remember an example of this is that uh, we had someone in the congregation, they had needed car repairs. And we didn't choose to go to use the Agape Fund. We asked for the church to give a love offering and it just they came in anonymously and when when the bill was done for that car repairs we had it to the dollar no dollar less no dollar more I get in chills right now thinking about that and I mean and I'm proud to be a part of a church and lead a church that does that I'm not here to boast and brag because we can do better okay that's kind of the other side of the coin we can always do better uh, when we know a need, we arise to it. But when there's needs in the family, I mean, in the community, there's times that really, take, please pray for me and our leaders how, and how we discern some things. And I am so thankful for New Hope Ministries. They're our resource. We support them in many ways. Uh, and uh, there are phone calls away for me or an e -call, email away. And I'll say, I just got contacted by somebody in the community and here's their need. 
have you, or are you aware of this person? Have, are you helping them? And a lot of times they are aware of the person, their needs are met, or they've been turned away because the person's budget is in order to meet their need, but they have extra expenses, extra things that they won't cut out of their life, or they're abusing things in their life. So, I mean, if you have a friend that says, hey, can you give me $500? I need to get this done, but then you're seeing that they're going out three times a week, having dinner out, and we know how expensive that can be today, right? And just they're not using their resources well. And sometimes we end up enabling them instead of helping them, okay? Sorry for the extended example, but we have to understand, we have to balance this, that, but sometimes we just need to say, Lord, how can I help them? And that's, I've prayed that, and then it's like, pay the bill, give them a, a gift card for groceries or gas, and they're accountable for what they do with it. It's between them and God. If they're going to abuse it, take, me, take advantage of somebody. Uh, sometimes we, so we make ourselves, sometimes are vulnerable. Are you ready to make yourself vulnerable to care for the needs of others? I think, again, I think that's an example of Christ to us. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? There's the love test. Are, are, is there family members, friends, church family, people in the community, work, co-workers, something like that in your life that you're, you're saying, boy, that's a shame. But have you ever thought, how could I help? How can I serve? So service always involves giving. We said it always involves sacrifice, but also it involves giving. And it may be just that you stop and listen to somebody. And you don't have the answers, but you pray with them that God will provide the answers. Or you can find resources that will answer what they're going through. But it always involves giving you time, talent, treasures, uh, giving of yourself in a way of maybe emotionally. And that you're carrying somebody's burdens with the stress that you kind of come under and carry some of the burden with them. And a, and a time that you're serving with them and helping to relieve that in their life. Serve one another and follow the example of Jesus involving sacrifice and giving. James, the brother of Jesus, gives us more commentary on this and teaching on this. Uh, on, and I'd like to share with it you. Uh, it's on the screen. James 2, 14 through 18. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Remember John said in verse 15, 18 there, Dear children, let us love with words, not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. You take action, but you be ready to give the truth. Why are you serving? Because you love them, and you've been loved by God, and you want the, them to experience God's love. Okay, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can this kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye, and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. I love James' commentary there and what he was taught and, uh, and how he brings it there. And he kind of joins it right there with John's teaching in Jesus, of course, the example. And then Galatians 5, 6, one of my favorite verses. It's hanging on a wall 
on, on the wall in my office, uh, I needed to remind me at the times because my heart can get hardened and, 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 and where I need to have a melting of my heart and a challenge of my heart. Paul writes to the Galatians, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Now, love doesn't gain me salvation. Love is a fruit of a transformed life, a Christian life. Uh, the only thing that counts is faith, your faith, expressing it through love. And may you examine yourself, test yourself in this scripture passage called the test of love for your life. Let me share a story in closing. You all heard about the Titanic, right? We all heard that story. Uh, and uh, then some of you have heard the wreck of the image Fitzgerald, the famous song, right? And, uh, uh, but you may have never heard of the wreck of the Empress of Ireland. Anybody have heard of the Empress of Ireland? I didn't think so. Most likely you'd have to be Canadian uh, here because it was there. Some call it the, the Canadian Titanic, their account. Okay, this is just a few years after the Titanic. Um, the Empress of Ireland was a British built ocean liner that sank near the mouth of St. Lawrence River in Canada following a collision in thick fog with a Norwegian coal carrying ship. And, on, and it happened on May 29th, just a few weeks ago is the anniversary of it, in 19. 14. So if I do my math right, 110 years ago, is that correct, Rudy? I see you nodding your head. Okay, 110 years ago, and yet they still remember this in Canada. If you look it up, they, they have a memorial time of this because, again, it's tragic. I mean, it was tragic of the Titanic, but here are the numbers here, okay? Although the ship was equipped with tight, watertight compartments, and in the aftermath of the Titanic disaster, two years earlier, they did carry enough lifeboats. What was one of the problems of the Titanic? Not enough lifeboats and mismanagement of the lifeboats too, okay? So they had that all figured out for this ship, um, but she got hit and in, within 14 minutes, the ship sunk, 14 minutes. Okay, the sad statistics. Of the 1,477 people on board, 1,012 died. So we're talking uh, 400 and some survived. The ship was bound to go to Liverpool, England. On that ship were passengers of the Salvation Army. 161 Salvation Army personnel and their families. They're going to an international conference in London. 109 Salvation Army officers drowned. But may, maybe they didn't have to. The few survivors of the shipwreck says this, that finding that there was not enough life preservers for all, the Salvationists, as a, that's their title for them, their Salvation Army, they took off their preservers and gave them to others saying this, a quote, I can die better than you. And they gave their life preserver away, hoping that they would still have a chance to hear the gospel. And then again, they said how the crowd on the boat as they were abandoning ship and everything, how they, they, they saw the salvationist at peace at what the, they're, they're facing. This, we would say, is truly faith expressing itself through love. Maybe you're not put in those kind of dramatic, terrible situations, but in daily life, you do experience things that are tragic in people's lives. Uh, and they're facing many things, consequences of their sin, consequences of other sin, consequences of just living in a fallen world. 
How will you respond? Will your faith lead you to show love? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this word today and the test of our love. Are we like Cain or are we like Abel? Are we a child of the devil or a child of God? Is there any hatred in our lives, Lord? Help us to be convicted that it's there. Be broken about it. Help us to confess it. Repent, meaning leaving that hatred, bitterness, and seeking reconciliation, forgiveness with you and with others that have, have a broken, we have a broken relationship with. Help us to find the way of righteousness. Help us to love as you have loved us. Help us to serve as Jesus led a, mo a model for us to serve in washing feet, in humble service to one another. Help us to have eyes and hearts that are open to the needs of those around us in the church, in the community. Always Look ready to bring truth and action together to bless others and for the kingdom of God. Lord, show us the way. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The praise team is going to come up and help us because it's a song we don't sing very often. And they said, Kay, could we help you do that? So they're going to come up. Rob and I have to pull it up here a moment. Oh, I need to... Oh, that's right. That's right. Sorry. We're looking at hymn number 314. 314. Why don't you stand with us to sing in worship and response? 314. Reach out and touch. We won't start until they're in place. Let me move away.
Lord fill you with his word and spirit and that you go forth and live in the fact that all that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Amen.